Good morrow, my lady. Oh, good greetings, Lavar. I be Mistress Nora, the spinster of the Shire, and this were my fine sheep, Nancy. Good morrow, Nancy. I have been told this day that you have come to learn how to spin and weave. Indeed. Wondrous well. Well, the first thing we must needs do is get some wool off of fine Nancy's back, and for this we must cut it. Does it hurt the sheep? Oh, nay, not at all. Tis like getting a haircut on a hot summer's day. And how does it feel? Oh, wondrous well. Ah, it is soft. I marry it. We'll make a fine coat this day. The next step is the cardin of the wool. You take the cardin combs mm -hmm. and the wool as it does come off the sheep. And not you, it is not clean or fine at all. It is much knotted. Mm -hmm. So we must brush the hair. You put it on the cardin comb, such as this. Then you take the two combs, oppose in each other, and gently rock them back and forth. Ah. See you how clean. Just get out all the burrs and mats. And makes fine hair. And then? And then you do it pull down and it comes off the ah. carton comb. And this is what is called a roll egg. A roll egg. Aye. And that is what you spin with. Now, all spinning is, is twisting the fibers. So you take the roll egg, and see, I can do it with my fingers, and just twist, and it locks the fibers together, and so forms a thread. But it is much easier and faster upon a spinning wheel. In order to spin, all you do is hold the twist out with one hand like this, mm -hmm. and then draw the fibers out and let it go. Ah. Might I try it? Aye, sure. Just hold the fibers and then let them spin, right? Aye. Ooh, now that's a big blob there. Aye, that were called a slub. A slub? Aye, Mary. <laughs> and you should be proud of it, for quite a few people pay more for such wool that looks more hands fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is not easy at all. Nay, it does take great practice to be a spinster. Methinks that's true. No, the next step is taking the fine threads and dyeing them. My favorite color being the glorious red. Ah. And where do we get our colors for our dyes, Mistress Nora? From natural things, plants and roots. To make red, you can use beetroot or the bark from the madder tree. Mm -hmm. And this for cochineal, we red bug from South America. Mark you how, when you crush it, it does make a red dye. To make yellow, you can use onion skins, such as that. And here we're an example of onion skins. Is it not fine? It is indeed. So you take your bark or root or beet, and then what? Well, then you grind it up, uh -huh. and you boil it in water, and that pulls the color out. Ah. And then you have this wonderful colored water that dyes your yarns. Yes. And now, we take the colored yarns and we weave with them. This is a loom. And all a loom does is move long threads up and down. So your cross thread that you're putting through mm -hmm. is locked in a pattern. And so forms the cloth. Uh -huh. Now, what, Mistress Nora, could one weave on a loom such as this? Oh, well, I have a fine sample here of a glorious cloak. Ooh, and beautiful it is indeed. Now, how long would it take to weave a garment such as this? To weave a garment, it would take two days. And the whole process from sheep shearing to carding to dyeing and spinning? About two weeks. Two weeks? All told. Quite a lot of work for only one garment. Ah, oh, you must take goodly care of your clothes, for it takes a lot of work to make them. 
Well, I thank thee, Mistress Nora. And I thank you, LeVar. It is wondrous fine meeting you.